Hello, uh, in this video I will talk about factorial designs uh, and the factorial design is a very important topic or concept uh, in design and analysis of experiments. Uh, this video will focus uh, mo mostly on two-level factorial designs. Uh, there are uh, factorial designs with more than two levels but and you can read about those uh, more in the in the course book. In this um, in this video, <clears throat> I will talk about some important definitions, such as what is a factorial design, what is the main effect in, in a two-level factorial design, what is an interaction effect, uh, and how do we calculate these effects in two-level factorial designs in general. Uh, we will also briefly cover regression and regression model representation of the results from the analysis and toward the end, we will also look at some contour plots and 3D uh, response surfaces as a way of viewing the results from this model. Let's start uh, by the definition of a factorial design. Uh, and in, in Swedish, this is called faktorförsök. So in a factorial design, each complete replicate contains all possible combinations of the factor levels. So in this example, uh, we have, let's say, two factors, A and B. And if A has A number of levels and B has B number of levels, then each complete replicate of the experiment will contain A times B runs or treatment combinations. Uh, and the main effect, <coughs> which is most commonly used for two-level factorial designs, is, can be defined as the change in response variable Y which is induced by the change in the level of a design factor. So um, in, in two-level factorial designs, we can have the main effect estimated as the average change of the response variable y when the factor is changed from its low to its high level. I'm going to look a little bit closer on the, <coughs> the estimation of a main effect. Uh, and in trying to visualize this, um, how this is calculated, we can view uh, this square, uh, where we can take in the response values uh, in each corner of the square. <clears throat> so we have also on the x-axis we have factor A on the low level and the high level, and then on the y-axis we have factor B on low versus high level. And we can see the response values to, then in the different treatment combinations we have in the design. <clears throat> the main effect of A is then defined as the mean response uh, when the factor is at its high level minus the mean response when the factor is on its low level. So let's take in a formula here as well to explain this. So we have <clears throat> the mean eff effect uh, or the mean response, sorry, uh, when factor A is on the low, uh, sorry, the high level. So the mean effect of A is defined as the mean response when A is on its high level, which is the green parts here, 52 and 40, divided by 2 minus uh, the mean response uh, when factor A is on its low level, which is uh, the red part here. So if we calculate this, we get the main effect estimated, estimated as 21 units. And this means that the estimated change in the response when factor A is increased from its low to its high levels level is uh, an increase in the response of 21 units. So the direction is important here. When we go from low to high level, uh, the, the effect is defined as going from low to the high level of, of factor A. <clears throat> now, an interaction effect, or in Swedish, some space effect. Uh, this occurs when the change in the response variable Y induced by the change in the level of a design factor is not the same at all levels of the other factors. So <clears throat> this is a li little bit less intuitive to, to understand. So we'll, we'll uh, consider another calculation example uh, to try to explain what's, what's happening when you have an interaction effect. 
So this is another two, time, two to the two design. So we have other response values in these corners of the design. Uh, now, <clears throat> if we want to estimate the effect of increasing A when B is on its high level. So increasing A from low to high when B is on its high level, which is over here, we go from 40 to 12. So we have the effect is actually 12 minus 40, then so minus 26. So we get a reduction in the in the response with, sorry, minus 28. Uh, a reduction in the response with 28 units. Uh, when we increase uh, A from low to high level and at the same time B is on its high level. Now, the effect of increasing A when B is on its low level is 50 minus 20. So that's a <clears throat> positive effect of 30 units. So we go from low to high level on factor A when B is on the low level. <clears throat> then the, um, uh, the effect is 30 units. Now the interaction effect is defined as the effect of increasing A when B is on its high level, which is minus 28, minus the effect of increasing B, uh, sorry, increasing A when B is on its low level, which is minus 30, and by convention we divide by 2, and this is estimated as minus 29. So the, the interaction effect between A and B is minus 21, 29. In this case, um, <clears throat> interaction plots like the ones you see here, uh, so these are called the interaction plots, and then they are often uh, available in softwares, and they are useful tools to see if there seems to be some sort of substantial interaction uh, effect occurring in the, in the design. Now, <clears throat> here we can see that when um, B is on its high level and we increase A, we follow this white line. And so we actually have a reduction in the response. But when we increase A and B is on the on the low level, we have a, an increase in the response. And since these two, uh, the slopes of these two lines have opposite signs and they actually cross each other, then there is some ev some evidence of a potential significant interaction effect here. On the other hand, uh, if the lines are, as in this example, sort of parallel, uh, it is a sign that there seems to be no substantial interaction effect between the factors. So we have sort of the same behavior uh, or, or increase in, in uh, the response, increasing factor A on when B is positive and when B is negative. Okay, so <clears throat> in general, um, the effects of a two-level factorial design can be calculated according to this formula. So here we have the sum of the responses or the sum of the average responses if we have replicates. Uh, these are the sum of the responses for each run or each treatment, co each treatment combination. And we divide by m over 2. Or we can rewrite this as 2 over m times this sum of the response values. m here is the number of runs or treatments in the design. And uh, y uh, and the plus and minus signs in, in this sum is determined by the, by the, um, the column uh, of the effect in the matrix. We will come to this soon. Okay, uh, so in this slide, uh, I'm thinking that we can do a little bit of an exercise. So take a moment and pause the video and then calculate the, th the three effects in this design matrix. Main effect of A, main effect of B, and the AB interaction. Okay, so let's look at how this is calculated. So <clears throat> if we want to calculate, for example, the main effect of A, we take the, the um, 
the signs here from this column of A in the design matrix, and this is in the, in the standard order. <clears throat> and we put these minus and plus signs uh, before uh, the response value, values in each uh, run, and we, we uh, sum them. And uh, we divide by M over 2, and M in this case is 4, because we have 4 treatment combinations or 4 runs. And the sum is 42. Uh, if we take this sum here, divide that by 2 and we have 21. <clears throat> so the main effect of A in this case is 21. And we do the same uh, for B, we get 11. And the AB interaction we get 1. So here we have the effects uh, for, for this small example. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so we should also mention that uh, the uh, Y bar, the overall average is important when we come to the next stage here in the regression model representation. So the overall average we, we calculate as the average of all these response values then. <clears throat> Okay, so the regression model representation is a very popular way and, and perhaps intuitive way of representing the results of the analysis. And here we have the model assumption. Uh, so Y is the response value. Beta zero is the intercept, which is normally estimated uh, as the mean of all response values in the design. And then we have beta one, which is one half of the effect estimate for x1, or factor a, if we use that um, terminology in, in this case. Uh, epsilon it is the um, residual or prediction error in the model, in this model assumption. And note that the epsilon is not part of the actual estimated uh, model. And then uh, xi, let's say x1, x2, and so on, they take on the value plus one, uh, if uh, x1 is on the high level and minus 1 if x1 is on the low level. And uh, it goes for all the regression parameters uh, in two level factorial designs is that they are one half of the effect estimates uh, of these um, in these um, two level factorial designs. So here in this case where we had the effect estimates a21, b11 and ab equal to 1, then we can get the estimated regression modeled as 35.5, which is the overall average we had on the on the previous slide, and then 10.5, which is 1 half of uh, 21 times x1, plus 5.5 x2, uh, and plus 0 0.5 x1 x2. So there you have the regression model uh, representation. Okay, so <clears throat> here we have a, this regression model where we have only a small interaction effect, which is can be seen as the small value here before, before uh, or in front of x1, x2 here. And we can see the 3D response surface where the response is plotted um, as the surface above the two dimensional factor space. So we have factor B and factor A, and then we can plot, or the software in this case plots the surface <clears throat> Uh, as this sort of plane we have uh, above uh, this, fact this factor space. Another very popular way of looking at the results is to project this uh, three-dimensional surface down onto uh, this uh, two-dimensional factor space, uh, and we can create what, what is called a contour plot. And the software also creates lines, contour lines, where we have constant uh, response values and the design expert software also creates a sort of a heat map with colors where red is the higher uh, the ha higher the response value is the, the more red you have here and the blue is the lower response values uh, <clears throat> and these two plots are very useful of course when you try to uh, to figure out how to set your factors for example to, to get the specific value uh, or to maximize or minimize uh, the response and so on. Uh, now, <clears throat> for the last slide, let's take a look at the, this, this design uh, where we have a regression model which, with, with a much higher interaction effect. 
So the estimated effect here is, um, or the interaction effect in the regression model is minus 14.5. Uh, and you should notice that this high interaction effect actually can be interpreted as this twisting that is occurring here in this plane. So it's a sort of a twisting of the underlying response surface. Uh, and uh, this uh, interaction effect is one way to try to model this behavior in the, in the underlying response surface. Um, and this is also a good example where, where you can see the usefulness of the contour plot because while you can sort of understand that the maximum is over here uh, in this sort of saddle uh, behavior you have in this response surface, it, it is quite much easier in the, re the contour plot to, to locate where you have the, the, the maximum values and the minimum values. So uh, overall the, the response uh, contour plots and the response 3D surfaces are uh, very useful tools to try to understand and play with the the regression model uh, that you that you have after the analysis. Okay, with that I conclude this first introduction to the factorial designs, and I thank you for listening. Bye bye.